Hi guys, today we're going to be looking at diamonds and the covalent bonding that happens in carbon. So by the end of this lesson, we should be able to recall that carbon can form four covalent bonds. We're going to explain that the vast array of natural and synthetic organic compounds occur due to the ability of carbon to form families of similar compounds, chains and rings. And finally, explain the properties of diamond. That's what we're going to be focusing on today. We'll look at graphite, fullerenes and graphene uh, in later lessons. So, first thing I'd like you to do is three very quick questions. Tell me what is a covalent bond. Tell me how many electrons does carbon have in the outer shell. Tell me how many bonds can carbon make. And then with that final question, I want you to tell me how you know how many bonds carbon can make. And the hint there is think back to your earlier question what actually is a covalent bond. So pause the video here, give yourself about three or four minutes to do those quick questions. Okay, let's look at some answers then. So what is a covalent bond? A covalent bond is a shared pair of electrons, often between two non-metal atoms, because we know our non-metals are the ones that form covalent bonds. How many electrons does carbon have in its outer shell? Four, because it's in group four of the periodic table. Therefore, it's got four electrons in the outer shell. So how many bonds can carbon make? It's also four. And how do we know? Well, first, let's remember that all atoms want to do is get a full outer shell. So with carbon's outer shell, a, a full outer shell would be eight electrons in it. So what carbon does is it shares its four electrons with another atom, well, with four other atoms, usually. Um, so it feels like it has eight electrons in the outer shell. So it can use each of those four electrons it has in its outer shell to each form a covalent bond. So four covalent bonds. OK, just a little look at what an allotrope is. Now, this word allotrope means something that is made from the same material but has different structures. Okay, so if we look at this picture I've got on the right hand side of the screen, we can see each one of these eight um, pictures shows a different shape. Okay, and what these all actually are is each of these uh, little dots is a carbon atom and each of the lines is a covalent bond. So it's showing the different ways that carbon can bond with itself. Okay, so it can do eight different arrangements as we can see here. So each of these we'd say is an allotrope of carbon because they are all made out of the same material, they're all made out of carbon, but as you can see they all have different structures or they all have different shapes. Okay, so we've got diamond, graphite, graphene, fullerene and carbon nanotubes. We'll look at all of these in more detail in later lessons. Today we're just focusing on diamond. But importantly, all of these allotropes are made out of carbon, but they're just arranged differently. Okay, so as you said, we're focusing on diamonds today. So diamond is one of the allotropes of carbon, and that means that diamonds are made entirely of carbon, which is pretty crazy to think that the same thing that makes up coal makes up diamonds. Okay, so what are the properties of diamond and what are the uses? Pause the video here and give yourself two minutes to jot down some of the ideas. What are the properties of a diamond and what are the uses? Okay, so we'll start with properties. Diamond is very, very hard. As we'll see in a second, it's one of the hardest natural materials in the world. It's lustrous, which thinking back to our previous module, mean, it's just another word for shiny. Okay, so lustrous means it's shiny. And it has a very high melting point, actually at 3,350 degrees Celsius, so very, very high melting point. So what can we use it for then? First thinking about the fact that it's lustrous, probably the most common use of the diamond, is in jewellery like this crown here. But what you might not know is they're also used as part of cutting tools. So with really industrial strength drills, they often tip them off with um, diamond 
because it's such a hard material, it can drill through or cut through materials much easier than even steel. So it's very, very hard. Okay, so now we're going to watch a very short video to try and see why are diamonds hard. So keep that question in your head the whole time we're watching it. And what I want you to do is make some notes on why is diamond hard. Okay, so we're going to use this video to help us answer that question. Why is diamond hard? This was just part of an experiment. Put some pictures up online, got some good feedback. Diamonds are commonly known as a girl's best friend, but there's more to diamonds than just their dazzle. Diamonds are the hardest naturally occurring substances found on Earth. And so, it's no surprise that on the Mohs Hardness Scale, which is a scale measuring the scratch resistance of many various minerals, diamond ranks a 10, with 1 being the least resistant to scratches, and 10 being the most resistant to scratches. But what gives diamonds its famous hardness? The answer lies in the molecular structure of diamond, which is composed of five carbon atoms sharing their electrons with each other. So, a better way of thinking about this, so there's obviously far more than five atoms in a diamond. You know, there's millions and millions and millions, as we'll see on the next slide when we come back to the PowerPoint. But all this bit is saying is that each carbon atom is bonded to four other carbon atoms. So that's what it means by five. There's obviously far more than five atoms in a diamond. In a tetrahedral lattice, the bonds between these carbon atoms are extremely strong and very, very, very hard to break. Also, since a lot of energy is required to break the bonds between these carbon atoms, this means diamond has a very high boiling and melting point. Because diamond is extremely hard, it can be used for industrial applications such as grinding, drilling, cutting, and polishing. Diamond also cuts faster and is more durable than other materials like steel. Also, Okay, so hopefully that's given you a bit of an idea as to why diamonds are hard. So pause the video here, see if you can write a quick sentence in your book as to why diamonds are hard. And then in the next slide, we'll go through those answers. Okay, so why are diamonds hard? To answer that question, we're going to have to look a bit closer at the structure of diamond. So each carbon atom in a diamond forms four strong covalent bonds. Now, we're going to be using those words a lot. Four strong covalent bonds. OK, so if we zoom in to the atoms in, uh, in a diamond, you'll see that each carbon is surrounded by four other carbons. Now this is only a little snapshot of the structure. I know obviously these ones on the outside look like they've got fewer than four, but that's just to make the image look a bit simpler and easier to, to focus on. Um, in a future slide, we'll see a, a bit of a bigger um, representation. It's a little, a little bit more confusing to look at, but we'll show all of our uh, carbons having four bonds. So, the fact that there's so many strong covalent bonds means that it's very hard to break them. So not only is each individual covalent bond very, very strong, but we've got millions and millions and millions of these. So overall, it's really, really hard to break them. So if it's hard to break them, it takes a lot of energy to do so. So that means it's hard, and it's also got a very high melting point because whether we want to try and break it apart or melt it, both of those involve breaking these many strong covalent bonds. Okay, do you remember back from the video, what do we call this arrangement where we've got four carbon atoms around uh, a central carbon? What do we call that shape? It's tetrahedral. Okay, so all the carbons in this are bonded in a tetrahedral arrangement. Okay, so as promised, here is our um, kind of more complex structure. So if you look at all of these carbons in the middle, all of them will show four bonds. Okay. 
So, carbon forms what's called a giant covalent lattice. So we've already heard from a previous module what a giant ionic lattice is. So we're going to look at what a giant covalent lattice is. We're going to break it down a bit. So giant just means it's very big. So what that means in this case is that it contains millions and millions and millions of atoms. Okay, so there's loads of atoms all bonded together, which makes it giant. Covalent means that the atoms within it share electrons, which means that they're very likely to be non-metals. And a lattice just means that it's in an ordered structure. Okay, so giant, there's millions of atoms. Covalent, they're all sharing electrons when they bond. And lattice means that they arrange themselves in a very ordered structure. Okay, three quick questions for you. First, describe how a carbon atom bonds in diamond. Second, explain why diamond is so hard. And three, both silicon dioxide, which is this image on the right, and diamond are giant covalent structures. I'd like you to suggest why silicon dioxide has a lower melting point than diamond. This last one's very, very difficult. Bit of a hint, look at the number of bonds that each atom is forming. Bit of a hint for you there. So pause the video here and give yourself more like five to ten minutes on this. Especially this last question should take a little while. OK, let's go through some answers. So describe how a carbon atom bonds in diamond. Well, each carbon bonds covalently to four other carbon atoms, forming a giant covalent lattice. So why is diamond so hard? A diamond is so hard because each carbon forms four strong covalent bonds. Those are the four words we're going to be using a lot. So it forms four strong covalent bonds, which takes a lot of energy to break. Both silicon dioxide and diamond are giant covalent structures, or giant covalent lattices. So why does silicon dioxide have a lower melting point? Well, it's because each oxygen in the structure only forms two covalent bonds. So overall, there's less strong covalent bonds than in diamond, so it's easier to melt it. It's still very difficult because it's a giant, ionic la uh, sorry, a giant covalent lattice, so it's still very difficult to break all those covalent bonds, but it's just a bit easier than diamond. So if we look here, the um, kind of brownie, orangey dots represent oxygen atoms, and you can see they only have two bonds each, compared to carbon, where it formed four. Now we have these silicon atoms that are forming four bonds each, but the oxygen are just forming two. Okay, last thing we're going to do today, I'd like you to describe and explain the properties of diamond. You've got six marks up for grabs, and the extension is to draw the structures of diamond and give three properties and three uses. So pause the video here, give yourself about five or ten minutes to do this, and then we'll go through some answers. Okay, so that first bit, describe and explain the properties of diamond. Six marks up for grabs. So breaking it down, if we're describing something, we've got to say the what. So we're going to say what are the properties of diamond. Okay, and then the explain bit, which comes afterwards, is we're going to say why. So we're going to explain why diamond has these properties. Okay, so the describe part or the what part. So what properties does diamond have? Well, it's hard and it has a high melting point. You could also have said that it's lustrous. So we've said the what, we've done the describe part. Now the explain, why is diamond hard and why does it have a high melting point? So, it's hard and has a high melting point because diamond forms a giant covalent lattice, so one mark for that, in which each carbon forms four, one mark, strong, one mark, covalent bonds that takes a lot of energy to overcome for the final mark. So there it is again, the four strong covalent bonds is what each carbon forms. And then the extension, draw the structure of diamond, 
that's going to look like this or if we want to make that a bit easier we draw it like this just as long as we're showing that each carbon is bonded to four other carbon atoms uh, and three properties where we can have hard high melting point and lustrous two uses of diamond are in jewelry and as cutting tools okay you've done a fantastic job and that's the end of this lesson